buttons um, that I got from Patchwork Rabbit in the UK. They don't support me in any way. I just comment them because I they have really good service. So I want to let other people know they have a good service going on. And then hopefully they will still stay in business. So this is currently where we are at. If you remember last time I frogged some stitches here because I thought it was wrong. And then when I looked at it, it's just me sitting a little bit crooked because of the way I'm filming, which made it so it looked like the, the last stitch was further down than what it actually was. So there was no mistake. So with that, we can go and fix that and take it from there what we want to do. So I will zoom you in. And let's get to stitching. So this is a series where I stitch everything on camera. Uh, everything is not always in frame on camera. But I am filming while I am stitching it. Last time I think I had a record with noticing uh, the move exactly when I needed to. So that was nice. And then just double checking that yes, this stitch will match up with this stitch on the same line. So it is correct. It just from where I'm standing, standing, sitting, it looked a little bit crooked. But hey, you got to see how to, how I frog a pin stitch that where I haven't cut the floss yet. And then you see how hard it was to pull it out. You know that it's stuck in there. Like you're not going to be afraid of it um, getting loose. A pin stitch. I could have done that on the diagonal like I showed last time, but I totally forgot because that's you do what you are used to do and not necessarily what is smart to do. If that makes sense. So then. Jumping over to do this stitch first because of I want the floss to be on the diagonal. And I want you to take this stitch with me before I go and do the other stitches. Kind of just trying to find the best way to trail my stitches so that. Don't need to go back and do any anyone else. So, and when there are stitches like this that are every other stitch, usually what I have found going on the diagonal uh, from left to right, uh, like a diagonal that go left to right. So this way. Um, usually it's the best way to get all the stitches with you. So 
Yeah. That's why I'm doing it this way. Uh, and now there is four stitches going down here and three stitches on the row underneath. So I will go down these four stitches and then go up the three last stitches. Because um, going up and down like that diagonally uh, still makes all the stitches look look what I see as perfect. So uh, playing floss chicken. Hopefully I can get in one more stitch and I hope you can't hear my husband too well because this will be a test. So if you do hear my husband mumble in the back, I am sorry, but if I am going to film, I need to try this out to see if I can film while he's talking because I can hear him. But I know when I am on virtual stitchers, uh, very often those kind of sounds I can hear, but it will not be picked up by the camera. So uh, we saw two videos ago that the machines, the saw, electric saw when building, the camera would pick those sounds up, so I had to mute a whole lot of stuff. So this will also be a test to see um, what we have to mute and not. So what do you say? Want to start stitching on a reindeer? I do. So. Let's get over here. And it's a good thing I made this brown color free because that's going to be the antlers. So yeah. I do try and not jump too much around when I'm stitching top to bottom. But at the same time, I also do exactly this. Like I will start most of the things you need to count to, and then I will focus on one thing, stitching that. So when doing the three, what I really would have done is just the top. And then I would come and do the top of this tree and then the antlers on this reindeer and the antlers on this reindeer and hopefully this ditch is actually in the wrong place. But I don't think anybody will notice because it's just a single stitch out in nowhere. So, I saw this because there are supposed to be three spaces between here and the middle uh, space is where I'm counting from but now I'm counting from the top of this snowflake instead so, so one two Since there was one stitch off, I'm just going to measure off that it's 
shifting the place it's supposed to be on the tree because I know the tree is correct like 100% and while I'm saying that I'm just counting and double checking but yeah it is it is in the right spot uh, height wise so that's good more that way then I will go over here and do this stitch then down and I did take this stitch first because I didn't want to do this stitch this stitch and then this stitch because then I would have to jump down here to take the um the stitch underneath and I don't want a straight line right under there I would rather come um, on the diagonal make the floss go on the diagonal on the back so two more stitches here and then I will do this one stitch connecting to the to the head of the reindeer I'm going to go and do that first and then I will stitch um, up uh, going forward because I didn't want to keep stitching up here and then go down and take this single stitch all along. So taking it with me when I can and I might change the direction I am stitching so instead of bottom bottom that I'm when I say bottom bottom I mean that the first stitch of the leg is starting at the bottom and the second stitch is starting at the bottom that's bottom bottom and if I do it the opposite way it's top top which I'm going to do now on this stitch which means the first leg goes from the top down and the second leg goes from the top down and I do this because uh, to be able to do this stitch before this stitch it doesn't make that big of a difference it just makes me happier so we have the antlers of the first reindeer So yeah, on on project like this where you have a lot of smaller details all over the place, so you're not too confined by there being stitches above, there's a lot of freedom and I tend to branch out and then focus more after I have branched out and done all the counting. Now, basically just going to do the antlers on the second reindeer. Um, if it doesn't get finished, it doesn't get finished. Like now I'm just doing it to finish off the floss. Because I can. <laughs> It's because, like, even though I like love parking, I do try and finish up the the flosses I can finish up, so I don't have too many. Stitches all, it's too many flosses parked all over the place, when I could easily just do a few stitches and end the floss instead. And this one is not enough to finish this reindeer's antlers. So 
Um, I don't want to finish in the last stitch above the reindeer's head um, because then I would have to can. I actually can. I can just keep on going. I thought that I wanted to pin stitch right there but it doesn't matter if I need to pin stitch and the stitch right here when I have to do these stitches. So. Not too big of an issue. Um, that's the last stitch I can get out of this one while not having to move around. And I'm actually going to pin stitch right here because when I do these uh, stitches that is like this on that side, I uh, don't want to have both pin stitches right beside each other. Um, I try to avoid that if I can because you can get a little bit of a bulk with a pin stitch underneath. I then don't want them to be on the same row. And of course I managed to get the floss off the thread on the back. But I got it. Because I don't want to flip this around. Even though it might be better now. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Let's do those last single white stitches all around. Especially since one of them was in the wrong place. And I want to fix that one that's in the wrong place, but really nobody is going to see that one stitch except for all of you because I have said it, it's in the wrong place the perfectionist in me wants to go and fix it everything else in me is screaming that no just let it be that's one of the few mistakes I can just leave in because it has nothing to say. I have, uh, I have been able to do what I needed, so I won't count off this for anything. So nothing is going to be wrong by having that right there. So one, two, three. Starting with the loop method Ending with open stitch And then we're going to go to I'm actually going to do the diagonal pin stitch in this one. Then I can show you what I said the last time. It's really nice. 
So you will do it on the diagonal to start with because then you do the first half of the leg. So stitching over to on 32 count is a really good coverage that you won't be able to see. The first leg is pin stitched, it will look normal. leg just I managed to do that a half stitch off of course of course okay so this is the middle And so this is the middle I'm supposed to do. And that's what usually happens when I'm suddenly trying to do the pinch stitch in another way than I am used to, I end up making mistakes. Just because it's those little automated things that you forget. Like I forgot that I was uh, in the first hole where the first leg is going to come up and not in the middle of them. stitching and how it's correct so I started in the wrong place and I'm doing the pin stitch underneath which is actually easier to do when the first leg is a pin stitch. <laughs> just, just as you know, that was a lot easier. So I do see that I'm doing it this way. I kind of need to wiggle at the top leg here. Oh no, the first leg loosened. Okay, we have to rip everything out. This is not working. And that can actually happen when you do the pin stitch where you have a pin stitch. Because if you didn't pierce the floss good enough, um, you will push down that first tail you cut off that will be pushed down to the back side and you get a mess okay i hope third time is a charm this is the middle. And since I know I'm gonna pin stitch again, maybe I shouldn't cut off this. Not cut off the length at once, but wait until I have done second pin stitch. So 
my thinking because then I won't push down that floss. Feel my needle slip on the weave. Like, it was a good thing I double checked because it has slipped to the wrong oh, place of the weave. Okay. So now that's sucked down, good and nice. Now we can cut both of this, these off at once. Say that and do them separately because I don't want to cut wrong. So now that pin stitch is really pinned down there. So a good way to do it is um, to don't cut the, the tail of the starting pin stitch over here. And yes, I am crazy. And I am going to fix this stitch because it's in the wrong place and it's bothering me. If I didn't know it was in the wrong place, it wouldn't have bothered me, but it does. So, I'm take it out. All right. One, yeah, one, two, I almost did the same mistake again. I was like, what am I, why am I going to do the stitch where I just removed it? And it was because I'm thinking there is three stitches and there's three stitches in between. It's not one, two, and the third is the stitch, it's one, two, three, and the fourth is the stitch. <sighs> I really don't have my head with me for this. And yeah, I sometimes do that. If I get lost on the pin stitch where to do it, I just count all over again. So then do the second leg. And then do Stitch again to end. Just like the last time I need to fix the top leg after the pin stitch to make it look okay. So that's one way you can do those single stitches. I do prefer to instead try and have just like I'm going to do now, like this length 
has now two separate strands so I'm just pulling one of them out and uh, folding uh, and this way I can do the loop start when doing a single stitch and I believe that is going to be the last single stitch in the this part of the pattern which is nice so those single stitches are usually the ones that are bothering me the most I'm not a fan of them because there is no real good way to do them uh, the best one is as I said uh, separate the two strand after they have been cut and make a new loop but if you do that a lot of times you end up wasting a lot of the floss so Kind of don't want to do it too much and then there is one more S snowflake to do just trying to find a good place to count from here. And no. I can't just go one up. I have to go to the side to find the middle. Um, just count again just because I pulled it out. So this is a snowflake with three stitches here, one in the middle, three stitches here, three stitches there, and three stitches there. Um, so I first want to jump over to this side because I want it to go diagonally uh, if I can on the back. Uh, the the floss I mean go diagonally on the back. There's something wrong with that stitch. One, two, three, two. Just, just it looked too big, but it was correct. So 
So I will trail off into that stitch. Then I will trail off into this stitch. Come back to this corner. Go to the middle stitch. Then I will trail to the left, which is really unusual for me to do. And then down. And up. Over. And complete these two stitches to the one underneath. And then pin stitch. So that was all of the snowflakes done. So I will zoom you out. So no more snowflakes to do. We have um, the main part of the big tree done. We have the starting point for both of the reindeer. Uh, so Maybe next time we should count and find the small tree and then there isn't any big counting going on except for if I need to count the border to make that correct. But uh, it's not that difficult to count if I just stitch the main part of the picture first. Like if you see over here, like uh, you then know that, okay, this edge is where this is going to stop, where this is stopping. And then you do the corner, and then you can do the length. Um, so yeah, that's what I had for you today. Um, hopefully I will be able to film again. I need to see how this video is be behaving with my husband uh, playing and talking in the other room. So if this goes well, then I know I can keep uh, filming this way. If it isn't going well, I excuse so much for all the background noise you have been experiencing, but like, since I have to stitch everything on camera, I kind of need to just try out what works and doesn't work. Um, so the only thing I can say.